Options for dentureware's. Uh, when they go into your office, what are they told? What, what do you talk about? Well, Randy, we have options for all of our patients. There's always one diagnosis, but more than one way to treat the problem. And in a nutshell, with as few as only two implants, for example, a patient that has a lower denture that's moving around, which is typical, then with just two anchors, the teeth can snap into place, and that's a great solution to a problem. Uh, however, uh, what's better than that is placing four implants. So with four implants, now there's some different ways of handling this problem. And by that, I mean they can still have a removable appliance. Typically, we don't like to, uh, to go that route. And once we explain to our patient what we can do with fixed, then boy, the light bulb so turns snap on. So snap in, snap out. Snap in, snap You'd out. You'd rather give them a fixed set of teeth that don't come in Absolutely. Out, which sounds like an obvious one. Sure, sure, absolutely. How many implants for that? Typically four, but many times we'll, we'll place five in, in an upper jaw, but usually four in the bottom jaw, and that will hold 12 teeth. Now, the way it's conventionally done is what's called a conversion method, where basically the implants are free-handed into the bone, and an acrylic denture plastic is changed to be placed into the jaw as a fixed uh, set of teeth. Well, the problem with that is there's a lot of maintenance issues. These teeth will break and chip over four months of time because this is just a first set of teeth, what we call a preliminary set of teeth. I don't like to do that. In our practice, we prefer a different approach. The same day teeth protocol takes into consideration a prosthesis, a, a bridge that's made in advance of the procedure. So the day of surgery, we're placing something that actually has metal reinforcement and it looks very good. So when it's in place, the maintenance issues are not there. So the patient doesn't have to be subjected to back and forth, back and forth visits, and neither does the dentist have to be worried about those issues as well. So it's a whole different approach. And it's So done with all these same day teeth kind of concepts or teeth in a day or whatever they call it, they're put in some sort of a temporary for four months or so or five months. Is that right? That's correct. And you're saying that maybe some of the national brands are putting them in plastic, temporaries, yes. and you are putting them in something else. It's a different material. It, it's, a, it's a highly compressed material that, that is not prone to fracture. Okay. Very minimal issues from a maintenance standpoint. And most importantly, they look much better. They look like a final set of teeth. And the best part of the approach we use, it's all done virtual, meaning with software. It's a guided approach. So the day of surgery, we're not free-handing. I mean, my goodness. What does that mean, free-handing? Free-handing means you're looking for bone at the time of surgery, looking at an x-ray, looking at the bone. Well, think about this. We've had robotic surgery available for many years. We put a man on the moon back in the 60s. My <laughs> goodness, if we can't virtually guide, meaning the day of surgery, it's all pre-planned. So there's not much That's thinking. how you do it. Absolutely. We, to the, it, and it's so accurate. Randy, the day of surgery, it's like a checklist manifesto. One, two, three, four, five. We go right down the list. Everything is there. And the, it's choreographed with our staff and ourselves, almost like a symphony. And the end result is just so predictable and so aesthetically pleasing and functional. When you tell me on the phone that there's less downtime for the patient the way you're doing it, than the way it's traditionally done. Elaborate on that. Sure, by that I mean, instead of, again, freehanding, uh, placing the implants at the time of surgery, that takes time, and even more time is involved in converting that denture, piece of plastic, to a bridge, a horseshoe. There's a lot of time, up to an hour and a half to two hours of laboratory work. Well, guess what? With our approach, it takes 15 minutes for the teeth to be tweaked, as we call it, fine-tuned, polished up, and screwed into the jaw, what a difference. So and you're using guides yes. rather than freehand. When you say freehand, are you say, implying that maybe they're going in with a scalpel or whatever you're doing well, and, and, and doing it that way rather than doing it on the computer and just putting it where the bone is? The difference is, yes, exactly. Is, am I kind Meaning of right we open that? up the gums and a certain amount of bone has to be worked with and then these little screws have to be put into certain positions and it's all done by a subjective way of looking at things and objective looking at the x-rays and all, that's very crude, very crude compared to using software. And when I say guided, I mean, we have appliances that get placed into the mouth that we position and pin. While they're sedated. Yes, okay. yes. 
So, so the accuracy, in other words, we've already done the surgery in advance. We're doing it now the second time. And it's so much faster, so less time for anesthesia, that's a big plus, less pain for our patients afterwards as well because we're in and out so much more quickly. And finally, the end result is so predictable and much improved, much better than the denture conversion approach. All right, now, why go to an oral surgeon? I'll put you on the spot. Sure. To do implants over someone else? Well, the advantage of going to an oral surgeon is that our training as oral maxillofacial surgeons involves a full six months of anesthesia training. So we really are trained well, we're, we're very well versed in this important area of making our patients very comfortable in a very safe environment, and we are able to address all their medical issues quite well. We're interactive with their physicians, and we understand the medical realm because our all training right. Gave us that. So I guess statistically, maybe 3% of the time there might be a problem, which ends up at the oral surgeon anyway. So you might as well start with the oral surgeon to do it, maybe? Is that your thought? That is correct. I know you don't want to brag about yourself, no, right? No. But do you, so you teach this to, to other oral surgeons, periodontists, and other dentists to do it this guided way. Yes, yes. In fact, we're the only teaching institution in the country uh, that is involved with this particular protocol uh, of, of being able to in advance, again, make these teeth, and every step of the way is literally guided because it was done from a software-based uh, technology. So that, in other words, before we even touch our patient, we've already, in our mind's eye, in the virtual world with the software, already done the surgery. We've made the teeth in the laboratory, we meaning our partners in Reno, Nevada. And in essence, the, uh, the end sequence uh, protocol that we follow is based again on high tech. And why not use a technology that we have available to us? And get a beautiful smile. And get an outstanding smile.